Now, there's a stone on the hill of Tara called uh, Leofall that was recently vandalised. It was spray-painted with the word fake. So is it? Anthony Murphy is an author and founder of Mythical Ireland. Afternoon, Anthony. Hello, Sean. So traditionally, uh, uh, what is that stone? Uh, what power does it have stone and, and who put it there? Well, the stone, according to mythology, was brought to Ireland by the Tuatha de Danann, no less, in the mists of prehistory, along with three other great objects or talismans. Uh, they had studied mysterious crafts, uh, mystical druidry and all sorts of things in the islands of the north of the world. It is said to be the stone that shrieked under the feet of the true High King of Ireland. In other words, the candidate for kingship would stand on the stone or place his foot against the stone and if he was the right choice the stone would scream and if the stone was silent of course that meant he didn't get the job right okay so kind of our version of pulling the sword from the stone kind of thing a little bit. Now, the true provenance of the stone that stands on the Hill of Tara today is not known. Um, the stone was said to have been moved into position atop the monument that's called On Fora, which is the royal seat, assumed to be the place of the inauguration of the kings in 1820. It was done so to commemorate those locals, the pikemen, who had died in the Battle of Tara during the 1798 rebellion. And in fact, if you look very closely under the right lighting conditions, you'll see that there's a cross inscribed into the stone and the numerals 1798. Now, that does doesn't take from the fact that it may, of course, have been a very ancient relic of the hill. Mm. There was a debate as to whether it was moved from a location close to the monument called Duan Anil, the Mound of the Hostages, which is a Neolithic passage tomb, a small one uh, of the same age uh, as Newgrange, um, or whether it had been found at the bottom of a trench at on Fora and moved to the top of the mound. So this has, of course, uh, led uh, and given rise to discussion, debate uh, and, and all sorts of uh, controversy mm. about whether it is the real Leah Foyle, the stone of destiny. Uh, and uh, wasn't there also, it's amazing how many uh, beliefs have been attached to the stone. There's also a group called the, the, the British Israelites, was it? What did they think oh, about it? Yes, well, that is a whole, Sean, we could d- dedicate a week of programmes to the British Israelites. But in short, they came to Tara in 1899 to dig at the Rat the Wrath of the Synods, in the belief that the biblical Ark of the Covenant had been buried there. Now, the reason this ties in with Leah Foyle is because they believed that the biblical patriarch and prophet Jeremiah had come to Ireland with a mysterious uh, Judahite uh, princess, Tia Tefi, and that they had brought the stone uh, that we know as Leah Foyle, but which they claim was originally Jacob's pillow, the stone mentioned in uh, the biblical book of Genesis. You literally couldn't make this stuff up. Uh, the British Israelites were trying to prove a connection with the royal line of David in the Bible, and it was probably connected with a claim that they wanted to make for the lands of Palestine. If they could prove that the British royals were descended from the royal line of David, then they would have legitimate claim over uh, those lands uh, uh, that we call the Holy Land. Now, the the stone of uh, uh, foil, as it were, was said in some sources to have been taken away from Ireland. Uh, was first installed at Scone, or as it's pronounced in Scotland, Schoon, the Stone of Schoon, where the Scottish royals were uh, inaugurated. And later, I think it was King Edward I, brought it away in the 13th century to England, where it made its way to Westminster uh, and was placed under the coronation chair there. Of course, the difficulty with all of that is uh, the British Israelites, as far as they were concerned, there was no difficulty claiming that ancient Tara could have been the location of the Ark of the Covenant. But of course, Tara, we now know, and and I think we've known for a long time, was sacred to the Irish long before the British first stepped foot uh, on the island. Their claims are outlandish, to say the least, the sort of stuff you'd find in a Dan Brown novel. Yes. There are people today, Sean, who still take all of that nonsense seriously. People who believe that Jeremiah himself was buried at a monument at Loch Crew in County Meath called Cairn T, which is another of those Neolithic passage tombs. They say, no, it's not Neolithic. It is, in fact, Iron Age. It was built sometime around the 6th, 5th century BC uh, to entomb Jeremiah, who had come here uh, and brought Jacob's pillow to Ireland. 
And some people just think it's a Mickey. Well, it was Michael Slaven, who is the author of the Book of Tara, uh, says that there are several accounts which refer to it as the penis stone. And of course, it has been remarked that it is quite phallic in nature. Now, the great challenge about Leah Foyle in its current position is it's very difficult to, st- well, you couldn't stand on it. You could probably, but it would be a bit of a balancing act. It's not the sort of stone that naturally naturally lends itself to either being stood upon or to place your f- foot on. Mm. You would imagine that, that Leah Foyle, as it's described in the mythology, is a stone that would be recumbent lying on the ground. So this um, only furthers the uh, ludicrous claims of groups such as the British Israelites. Yeah. Had it been attacked before at any point? It had in 2012. Unfortunately, Sean, this is the third incident in just over 10 years. In 2012, somebody took an axe to it uh, and chipped away several pieces of it. In 2014, somebody tipped over a bucket of paint on it. And I suspect that all of the attacks on Leah Foyle, and this is my own personal view, I suspect that all these attacks are religiously motivated. There are people who have commented on my social media posts today. Well, one individual in particular who commented that you know, this this thing is an abomination. You see, in the eyes of the religious zealots, because this looks like a penis, this is a very overtly pagan symbol and not the true Leah Foyle, not uh, Jacob's pillow, not anything that could be called a sacred and holy emblem. Anthony, thanks a million. That was fascinating. Uh, thanks uh, for talking to us today. That was Anthony Murphy, author, and uh, he's the founder of Mythical Ireland. 